In the name of the God who loves us all, grace to you and peace. I'm going to begin by introducing myself. My name is Pastor Doug Rebley, and I serve as assistant to the bishop in the Eastern Synod of our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. I am coming to you as part of the ELC, what we're calling the ELCIC Summer Sermon Series, which we'll be offering through June through the middle of September. It's a chance to give our preachers and pastors a break from having to put together a weekly sermon. Whether they want to go on holidays or simply have that break, that is entirely up to them and their congregations. But this is also a wonderful opportunity to thank our pastors and their members who have been putting together these services online and in various versions over these last two or three months. You are to be commended for your gospel work. I thank you. I will be preaching for the, using the text, the gospel text for this, the third Sunday after Pentecost, which comes from Matthew chapter 10. I suspect most of you who are listening to our, or listening to or reading this sermon have never heard the name Kenneth Feinberg. He is the lawyer who chaired the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund, which gave money to the family of each person who died in the 9-11 terrorist attacks in the United States. Starting with a formula and then using his discretion, Feinberg considered the victim's age, their dependents, whether they had life insurance, and their income and earning potential. The value assigned to those lost lives varied dramatically. As little as $250,000 for blue-collared workers, as much as $7.1 million for executives. Feinberg, in an article I read in the New Yorker magazine, reflected on his experience. And this is what he wrote, quote, As I met with the 9-11 families and wrestled with issues surrounding the valuation of lives lost, I began to question this basic premise of our legal system. Trained in the law, I had always accepted that no two lives were worth the same in financial terms. But now I found the law in conflict with my growing belief in the equality of all life. Unquote. In today's Gospel reading from Matthew, chapter 10, we read of Jesus sending his disciples into a perilous world. There will be divisions in their families. There will be those who kill the body. The disciples must be prepared to take up the cross. And yet, in the middle of this recitation of conflict and danger, Jesus suddenly speaks of the smallest, most insignificant creatures. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, he says, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. In the marketplace, sparrows were the meat of the poor, the ground chuck of the first century, yet their lives, their deaths, are not beneath God's attention and care. Do not be afraid, Jesus says. You are of more value than many sparrows. When I told Bishop Michael Price, my colleague at our Eastern Synod office, that I was writing a sermon based on Jesus' words about sparrows, he started to sing, God sees the little sparrows fall. And I'll be honest, I started to laugh. And then I said, what the heck? I went to a Lutheran Sunday school as well, and I didn't know that song, so I did what we often do. I turned to Google. And of course, that Google search brought up another hymn, if you will, about sparrows, entitled, His Eye on the Sparrow. That title fascinated me, so I listened to it. I listened to a clip of Mahalia Jackson singing that hymn in 1958 and Whitney Houston 30 years later. Never heard of the hymn, His Eye on the Sparrow. So I did some research, thanks to Google. I learned that Jesus' words, do not be afraid, you are more value than many sparrows, inspired Canadian school teacher, Sevilla Martin in 1905 to write the words of that hymn, a gospel hymn 
that declares with assurance, I know God watches me. I also learned that this hymn became very popular in African American churches. In a world that insists that black lives do not matter, Jesus declares that overlooked, exploited, brutalized lies are in fact of the greatest importance to God. In a world that says the life of a rich person is worth 28 times as much as the life of a working person, Jesus says that God pays special attention to those who are poor and struggling and suffering. God cares. We are not alone. In these days of pandemic and COVID-19, how we need to hear those words. God cares. We are not alone. Jesus' calculus for the value of a life has little to do with a person's income or earning potential. To Jesus, our lives have innate value in and of themselves. We have value because we are creatures like sparrows, made in God's image. This mystic Julian of Norwich wrote in the, the 15th century of her vision of the hazelnut. I marvel how it might suddenly have sank into nothing because of its littleness. And I was answered in my understanding. It lasts and ever shall because God loves it. Friends, to Jesus, our value does not lead to compensation or a guarantee of safety. It means that we receive attention. The God who cares for the welfare of sparrows also keeps track of every aspect of our lives, even tallying up the hairs of our head. And I must say, I have a lot of them right now. It's been three months since I had a haircut. When St. Paul's description of divine love comes to a crescendo in 1 Corinthians 13, he promises that one day we will know fully, even as we have been fully known. I would say that we already are fully known, known more deeply than we even know ourselves. <clears throat> Occasionally, well-meaning Christians declare that God doesn't care. God doesn't care if you get a tattoo. God doesn't care if you have a glass of wine. When I was a teenager, trust me, a long time ago, I used to argue with my mother, Mom, God doesn't care if I wear jeans to church. And while it is true that none of these choices is for most of us a matter of eternal consequences, the idea that God doesn't care is entirely untrue. There is nothing, not even the smallest thing that is outside the circle of God's care. And if God cares about these little details, the sparrow of our lives, then how much more God cares about the shape of each life and of all of our lives. But please remember, God's care is not for me alone. Not just for people like me. God's care is for all of us. Back to Kenneth Feinberg, then I'll close. After the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund completed its work, Feinberg received a call from the president of Virginia Tech University asking him to manage the fund that would distribute compensation to the families of the students and faculty killed in the 2011 mass shooting. Feinberg writes, I realize that Feinberg the citizen trumped Feinberg the lawyer. My legal training would no longer stand in the way. This time all victims, students and faculty alike, would receive the same compensation. Dear friends in Christ, sparrows and disciples alike, we know God watches us. 
To God we matter. Don't doubt that. In God's sight, there are no unimportant lives. In the name of the God who loves us all. Amen.